Good morning, everyone. I got a real quick bulletin to give to you today, but first of all, want to welcome all of our new subscribers. I am utterly blown away in the 18 hours that have passed since I released my last video. 500 new subscribers have joined. Welcome, folks. Thank you very much. And to the rest of you who haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. So, like the rest of you, I was completely blown away yesterday by the launch of Falcon Heavy. What a magnificent machine. What an absolutely magnificent display of aerospace engineering. Those two boosters landing side by side. It's a little bit more staggered this time. Doesn't really matter, though. Both of them landed. It was truly amazing. And I must say, Falcon Heavy is my favorite rocket that's currently in service right now. But some questions were asked while it was flying, you know, since we have this, why do we need anything else? How could anything else ever really compete with this? You know, now that we have a rocket that can carry a heavier payload to orbit than any other rocket, why do we need competition? And how can anybody actually compete? Well, we're going to find out all of those things, including just some awesome footage of this magnificent flight in just a second. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... Now, the only thing that wasn't ideal about this launch was the fog. Other than that, everything went perfectly, and the view from this news chopper, I must say, is actually pretty cool. Something that other folks didn't get a chance to see, so I'm providing it for you here. In any event, this was a completely successful launch as far as we can tell. Everything went well with the booster separation, with the boosters landing, obviously, and the core booster as planned did not attempt to make a landing but rather was expended and this is something that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about Falcon Heavy and anything trying to compete against it. Indeed everything that SpaceX does when it comes to reusability relies on them keeping a reserve fuel supply in order to conduct the necessary burns to take them back to the launch pad. That is actually a substantial amount of fuel fuel and makes it a little bit more difficult to carry really heavy payloads up to geosynchronous orbit, which is why they had to expend the core booster. And so all of the payloads that you see on their website, and I mentioned this in my previous episode, reflect a complete expenditure of the rocket using all three stages, which of course is something that SpaceX would never do because it would make the entire process too expensive. So so ULA believes that there is a better way to compete against this, and that is to use all the fuel in the core booster and then retrieve the engines afterwards. At first it was parafoil recovery, now it's recovery at sea on a flotation raft. And this is the reason why Vulcan may have a chance of competing against Falcon Heavy, aside from fairing size, which I've talked about a million times, but also its ability to essentially exhaust all of the fuel in the core stage in order to achieve higher orbits. This has actually been an advantage of the Atlas V as well, and one of the reasons why the Atlas V can deliver heavier payloads out to geosynchronous orbit than Falcon 9 can, even though the thrust of the two rockets really isn't that much different. On top of that, military payloads such as the one that launched yesterday oftentimes need to be dropped off directly in geosynchronous orbit, not in a geosynchronous transfer orbit or GTO. What's the difference? Well, if you drop off a satellite in GTO, which by the way is how most satellites that go to geosynchronous orbit are deployed, you drop them off in a transfer orbit and they use their own engines to eventually achieve geosynchronous synchronous orbit, but that's not the case with many military satellites, then you have to use a lot more fuel in order to get the satellite 
all the way out to geosynchronous orbit as opposed to dropping it off in GTO. And so here's a comparison of the payload capabilities of the various versions of Vulcan Centaur against Atlas V and against even the Delta IV Heavy. And from this you can see why Vulcan Centaur is such a huge step up for ULA. It's capable of carrying, at least ultimately, heavier payloads out to geosynchronous orbit than even the Delta IV heavy. And this is a combination, of course, of improved solid rocket boosters, but mostly because it's constructed out of far more advanced and lightweight materials. The lighter the rocket, the further it can go. And this is one of the reasons also that it's going to be able to deliver substantial payloads to geosynchronous orbit that Starship won't be able to deliver either, at least until it has a third stage built into its fairing. Starship is just too heavy to push much of anything beyond low Earth orbit without refueling or without a third stage in the fairing, but I've talked about that before as well. The point I'm trying to make here is I love Falcon Heavy. I think that it's going to be a rocket that needs to be used a lot more in the future for all kinds of NASA missions. For military missions, obviously, it's going to be used for that, but it's not the only game in town even though it's such a wonderful thing to watch, especially the reusability of those side boosters in yesterday's launch. That's something special to see and something that no other rocket, not even Starship, is going to be able to provide. Obviously, Starship is not going to be landing boosters side by side either. So Falcon Heavy is an amazing rocket on so many levels and certainly capable of carrying the heavy payloads that it needs to in order to be competitive, but at the same time, it's not going to smother the competition. As we saw yesterday, if you're expending any boosters at all, that's going to put the price point in a realm where other companies like ULA can compete. That having been said, though, ULA is now definitely behind in the race to geosynchronous orbit. SpaceX has demonstrated that they have superior capabilities in reaching that destination for a variety of customers, and if Vulcan Centaur fails to launch as planned, then ULA is in a world of hurt, not only with their contracts with the U.S. military, but with everything else. Vulcan Centaur is all they have left. They're almost out of Atlas V's, and frankly, all of those future launches are reserved anyway. Vulcan Centaur needs to either fly, or ULA is in danger of collapse. And meanwhile, Falcon Heavy is demonstrated that it's a very solid, reliable rocket, and I believe it has a variety of future uses, including the colonization of Mars. What am I talking about? Didn't Elon Musk give up on that? Well, you're going to find that out in a future episode, so please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space!